Hey there, and welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hurts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor Josh, and I am so excited that you've connected to our page today. Be sure to grab a notebook, a pen, paper, your phone, however you want to take notes, and get ready for today's message. Let's jump right in. You want to help mold them and shape them and to bend the way that they bend. Are you listening to me? This ain't getting a hold of me. I'm not going down that path. It's not getting stuck in my head. This is not going to become a stronghold. Are you listening? There's purpose. There's, there's, there's passion in them that I haven't seen in a long time. It's our time to go over here where God's blessings are and learn how to live in the kingdom so that we can affect the people around us. All right, maybe you don't know who Miss Lynn is, but that's my mommy. She will be here on Mother's Day this year. It would be great to see her. Hey, man, what a great job Pastor John Mark did last week kicking off prayer. And I also want to give Pastor Chris a shout out. He was so nervous doing offering and announcements today. Pastor Chris did a great job. If you're watching online and our audio mix sounded a little off today, um, one of the computer systems that make it sound really good online broke this morning, so our online feed isn't as good. But I got a couple good reports, two, two numbers for you from Easter. We saw 2,200 people in attendance on Easter Sunday. That's between in this room, uh, in the children's ministry, and in the overflow rooms. And we saw 21 salvations. 21 people give their life to Christ. That's awesome. So Pastor John Mark kicked off this new series last week called Powerful Prayers of the Bible. And he talked about to, pr to be able to pray that the Holy Spirit would open your eyes to see things in the spirit realm, things that are happening around you. Today I'm going to go in a little bit different direction on prayer, but I want to give you the big idea behind this series. The big idea behind this series is this, prayer changes things. Prayer changes things, okay? How does it do that? Well, it either changes the circumstance or changes the way you're viewing the circumstance, all right? So prayer either changes the circumstance or changes the way you view the circumstance, but here's the problem. And why we're doing this series. Studies show that only about 20% of Christians actually pray. Which means 80% of Christians don't pray daily as part of their daily discipline, as part of their daily life. Now, no shame. There's no judgment. I'm not trying to make you feel that way at all. That's not, that's not the point. But if there's a problem, I think that it behooves us to study out a solution. How can we find a solution to this problem of people not praying? The Bible says you have not because you ask not. You ask not because you pray not. Right? I added the last part. So really it goes, you have not because you pray not. Okay, so we're going to study this out in this series. What are some models of prayer? What does the Bible say about prayer? We're going to jump right into this right after we pray. Father, we thank you for your word we ask you, Holy Spirit, as we get into your word today, that you would open the eyes of our understanding, enlighten us to your truth, in Jesus' name, amen. I will admit, I'm dealing with some allergies, so my voice is a little off today, I feel a little coffee. I don't know if anybody else is dealing with allergies right now, but doggone, we need to, we need to overcome this, man. You didn't hear about people having allergies like this 20 years ago? Like something going on with our food or something, I don't know, I'm not going to be so conspiracy, but... There was a document that was found that the Pope had met with Colonel Sanders from KFC. <laughs> and they had a conversation about the Lord's Prayer. Your holiness, Colonel Sanders said, you must make a change to the Lord's Prayer. Instead of give us this day our daily bread, it needs to be give us this day our daily chicken. 
I can't change the words to this prayer. The Pope was astounded. It's ingrained in our very heritage. They negotiated back and forth for a while. Finally, Colonel Sanders said, a half a billion dollars will go to the church right now if you change the words to our daily chicken. The Pope could not see any way of saying no and reluctantly agreed to the offer. He returned to the clergy chambers where all his fellow cardinals were. I've got good news and I've got bad news, gentlemen. The good news is we now have $500 million for our churches. Yeah, they all exclaim. How could there be any bad news with something like this? Well, he paused. We lost the Wonder Bread account. <laughs> eh. Dad joke. Talking today a little bit about why we do the things we do. Why do we pray the way we pray or don't pray the way we pray? I want to look at the Lord's Prayer, but in order to get to the Lord's Prayer, there's three scriptures, the pretext before the text, that I think takes a little bit of, like, it needs to have some attention. Today's sermon is going to come from what we call the prophetic voice. The prophetic voice points, it corrects, it directs, it instructs, it speaks the truth in love. And the layout of the sermon today is more exegetical. We're going to like go through the scripture and see what it says, go back and research it, okay? But I also in this sermon, humbly, have to recant something that I have preached for years and years and years as it pertains to prayer. Upon further study and research and understanding, there are some things about prayer that I preached incorrectly that I will correct today according to what I now see and I now believe. Now listen, I know that we all wish that there was like the most perfect person in the world and they read the Bible one time and they preached it correctly. As a minister, as a person in, in 2 Timothy when it says study to show yourself approved unto God, as someone who does study the word, there are times that you're going to get it wrong. There are times that you're going to preach based upon what you know at that moment. And there are things that I knew at that moment that I know differently now about prayer. But we're going to get to that in a minute. Turn with me in your Bibles, if you have them, to Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. And it starts out like this. And when you pray. So what does that mean right there, and when you pray? It means that there's an assumption. Jesus is saying that. You're going to pray, right? Jesus is assuming that prayer is a part of your daily life. He says, and when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites. Man, you ever been called a hypocrite? That's like one of the worst things ever, right? Don't be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray. They love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have their reward. But when you pray, go into your room, shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you, in other verses as, or translations, reward you openly. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases like the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words do not be like them for your father knows what you need before you ask him all right here's the context jesus is preaching a very popular sermon called the sermon on the mount sermon on the mount okay the immediate context is dealing with religious activity that is pleasing to god or that is not pleasing to god and he's combating bad teachings, bad implementation of prayer of the religious life. He's combating it. He's saying, don't be like hypocrites. That's a strong word, man. Right? And there are three things that he's coming against in the Sermon on the Mount. There's three things that he's saying, hypocrites are doing these things wrong. First one is how they gave in their almsgiving. They're giving to the poor. They gave to be seen. They gave, they gave so that others would look upon them as being religious. How they prayed was wrong, and how they fasted was wrong. All right, so the Sermon on the Mount is correcting these three 
wrong religious activities. They lent themselves to public display, especially if they were carried on at the temple. And even more so, if it was during a time of like public feasting or repentance. Have, have you seen like, um, I don't know, a lot of churches do it now from like January, for all of January, 21 days of prayer and fasting. You know, like, I understand that we do a, you know, put out there 21 days of prayer and fasting, but then when you take this symbol and then like put it on your Facebook page so everyone knows you're fasting, isn't that kind of the same thing? I mean, really, aren't, aren't we doing the same thing? It's just new technology. Guys, I'm fasting for 21 days. Like, awesome, man. That's so spiritual. What are you fasting? TV. Bro, you can't fast TV. Like, all these things, like, for, I'm giving this up for Lent. What are you giving up for Lent? Video games. That's not fasting. Like, literally, guys, just hear me out. My heart beat, really, because if we want to do these things the right way, literally fasting only pertains to food. And it's only fasting if you replace that time where you should be eating with prayer and Bible reading. If you don't do that, then you're just on a diet. It's not, it's not fasting. If you're just going to skip meals, it's not fasting. It's not biblical fasting, let's say that. It might be intermittent fasting. You know, maybe you gave up breakfast and you're only going to eat lunch and dinner in a certain window. I get that, but that's not. Okay, you understand? So Jesus coming across, he's like, yo, like, what are you guys doing? You're making up all this stuff. You're fasting video games? If he was here today, he would slap us all up for these things. So he's correcting them. He's coming out. And, and in the scripture, his disciples were a lot like us. He's saying, Jesus, teach us how to pray like John's disciples know how to pray. Teach us how to do these things. And so two times in scripture, Jesus teaches them or tells them how to pray. The one that we're looking at today is called the Matthean prayer. The Matthew prayer, Matthean. The Matthean prayer. And then he does something just like the Matthean prayer, again in Luke, but it's a lot shorter. It's only like three sentences long, and that's called the Lucan prayer. So here in the Matthean prayer, Jesus gives us two elements to the prayer. The first thing that he wants to show us is the purpose of prayer, okay? The purpose of prayer. So he says, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray to be seen. What's the purpose of prayer? It is not to attract attention on oneself, right? The purpose of prayer, the purpose, why we do prayer here in the front is not so that people watch you walk up here to get prayed over. That's not, like, if that, that's why the lights are off. No one cares who's getting prayed over. Like, no one wants to see you. Like, no one cares about that. You're not on the stage. You're not on the screen. We don't take pictures of it. Like, honestly, like, and I'm not trying to down it. Like, come up and get prayer. But no one cares, that you're getting prayed for. Like, that's not the point. It's not the point that someone sees you. Look, man, Sister, Sister Betty Bottom, she comes up every Sunday. How holy is she? Right? That, like, that's not the point. It's like, man, you came to church, get something. I, I, live, I live a life of desperation for God. Like, if I want something, I'm going to go, well, go get it, right? If you lack anything, call for the elders of the church that they may pray for you. That's what this is about. So he says, listen, it's not to draw attention to yourself. Prayer must be focused directly on God. Not me. Not people looking at me. God, I'm talking to you. Father, it is me and you in this conversation. I'm coming to you to make my request known. So let's take a look at this. Go go back to the beginning of this passage. Jesus says, and when you pray, he's assuming that we're going to pray. When you pray... You must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray. They love to stand and pray in the synagogues and the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly, I I tell you, they have their reward. So when someone looks at, man, look at this person, how holy they are. They're standing here praying. Man, wow, that is awesome. That's all you're ever going to get. One, prayer is not going to be answered. And two, you didn't store any treasure in heaven. You got everything you're going to get called attention. Oh, that's tough. That's rough. He says, don't be like that. So 
This question, we have to look at something. He says, when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. Now, that's a strong word, so i got to look this up. i got to look into this. I ask this question. Do all hypocrites love to pray? No, not all hypocrites love to pray. All right, let's ask this a different way. Is everyone who loves to pray hypocrites? No, right? That's not the point. That's not the point. He's saying, there are a group of people who I am labeling as hypocrites because when they do pray, they pray to be seen by people. They want to be seen. They don't pray in secret. They don't have a relationship with God. They only pray when it's in public to be seen so people can look at how holy and religious they are. Jesus is specifically talking about the scribes and the Pharisees. He's calling them, the scribes and the Pharisees, hypocrites. He's not calling everyone who loves to pray hypocrites. Get it? Don't be like the hypocrites. For they, and let's just boil it down. They love to be seen. Truly I tell you, they have your, their reward. They want to be in public. They don't pray in private. Then he says this. But when you pray, go into your room. Lock the door. Go into a closet. Hide under the bed. And pray in secret. Is he telling you that that's the formula? No. If he wasn't saying everyone's a hypocrite, then he's also not saying that this is the formula. Man, there's a whole movie about it. Not going not gonna to slam anything. About decorating your closet for prayer. Got to go hide in the closet. Why? What do you mean you got to hide in the closet to pray? You ain't no closet Christian. Come on, somebody. What Jesus was using is a term called an antithesis. An antithesis. This is what you're doing. You're standing in public praying. I say, go do it in secret. That's all he's saying. It's the antithesis, antithesis. You think that God's going to hear you because you're doing this in public and you're doing it out in the open. I'm saying my antithesis or antithesis is go pray in private. What you do in private, God hears you and displays openly. Make it between you and God. That's all he's saying here. When, when we look at these things, man, we want to make formulas out of everything. No, listen, we got to go into our prayer closet. And in the prayer closet, no, that's not what he was saying here at all. Do you understand this? He's simply giving you the antithesis. Pray in private. When you wake up in the morning, man, go get in the shower. When you're in the that's the best time for me. I'm in the shower. Ain't nobody else in there. Unless on the occasion there is. Which is my wife. I'm just saying. Normally, I'm by myself. <laughs> I'm just going to stop. I'm too far in. That's a great time to pray. Or maybe you're driving in your car. Got some worship music on. Talk to the Lord. Right? Now, don't close your eyes. So going into a prayer closet or going into your room and locking the door, shutting the door, is not the formula. It's the antithesis, okay? Second thing that Jesus gives us in this small little teaching here before the Lord's Prayer is he tells us about the nature of prayer. The nature of prayer. The nature of prayer is communicating to an understanding Father. Communicating to an understanding Heavenly Father. God understands you. He understands where you're at. He understands the situations that you're in. The Bible says that that's why he sent his son into the world in the form of flesh. That he could be, go through all the things that we could go through because he understands us. There can be this hard thing talking, like believing that you're praying to a God that doesn't understand where you're at. You don't know what I'm going through, God. Actually, he does. Now, you don't know how bad this hurts. Actually, he had nails through his wrists. But this disease I have, he became all manner of sickness and disease. He became all sin. Like, literally, literally, he does know exactly what you're going through. I'm just so lonely, he hung on the cross by himself. 
All his friends betrayed him and walked out on him. He was literally stabbed in the back. You get what I'm saying? He knows all those things, right? So when we pray, we come and we're talking to an understanding God. He understands the struggles that you're going through. He understands that you said, I'll never do that sin again. And then you did it 10 minutes later. He understands the challenges of perfected humanity living in an imperfect world, causing us to struggle with sin. He understands. So my error, my recant, you've been all waiting for this, haven't you? Where are you wrong? I want to know. I was wrong with the next passage, which says this. But when you pray, use not, do not use vain repetition as the heathens do, or as the pagans do, or as the Gentiles do, for they think they shall be heard for their much speaking. And I taught, I have taught, that vain repetition meant, now hear me out, don't be like the Catholics who only pray our Father and Hail Marys, right? Don't be like a religious sect that only prays, rehearsed, learned, scripted prayers. That that's not real prayer. You gotta have a relationship with God. You gotta communicate with God. God's so tired of hearing you say the same thing over and over and over again, and, and I was wrong. I was wrong. Now, I'm not wrong about Hail Mary. Don't be praying no Hail Mary. Don't be praying no Mary, right? <laughs> we can talk about that later. But literally, literally the disciples are like, Jesus teaches to pray, and he says, pray this. And he literally gives them a prayer to pray. So here's my thesis. Here's my, there's a problem, okay? There's a problem with prayer. The problem with prayer is only 20% of Christians do it. Why do only 20% of Christians do it? And here's my solution. Here's, here's what I think. Here's my answer to that. Why do only 20% of Christians do it, 80% don't? I think we're a lot like the disciples. We don't know what to say. We don't know what to pray. And then we say, dude, just talk to God. Well, unless you're an extrovert, you don't talk to very many people anymore. Right? Like, don't try to call me on the phone. You call me on the phone, but yep, okay, uh-huh, yep, okay, yeah, 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 got it, yeah, okay, yeah, uh-huh. Like, I'm getting you all, I, I don't like to talk on the phone. I talk for a living, I don't want to talk on the phone. I will text you all day. Like, so how I wish God had a cell phone, and I could just text my prayers. Like, bam, I, brr, brr, it'd be sick. Bam, I'd be quick on that. But I think a lot of people don't pray today, <coughs> excuse me, because we don't know what to say. And this, so the disciples are like, Jesus, teach us to pray like John's disciples do. And Jesus is kind of like being a little facetious in a way. He's like, well, John's disciples got to pray because they don't have me. But you, you don't really have to pray because you've got me. You didn't get that, right? Like, like I'm, I'm right here. Like, I'm literally feeding you. I'm literally giving you everything I am right here. And so he was showing them relationship. And John was showing them the formal way to access God because they weren't walking with Jesus like, like these disciples were. So he's like, all right, man, oh, gone. You guys want to know how to pray? Pray this. And he gives them a model to pray. He gives them the very words to speak. But what he was combating there in that passage when he says, do not use vain repetition, what he was combating was, don't just babble words for saying words' sake. That when you, let's just say that you're going to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be that. You're going to pray that. I was just talking to a brother during breakfast. Um, he, he's a theologian as well. And he said, in the Hebrew... The, the, the priests or the, the um, rabbis were taught that if you did not pray those prayers in a heart, in a mentality of it being the first time you ever prayed it, 
it was sin. So, so yes, we're praying the same prayer, but I'm approaching it as if it's the first time I'm ever praying it. Dude, that's cool. That's cool, right? So, so like, 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 think about it. Yeah, but you know, like, you can't be just praying the same prayer. We read the same verses over and over again. We read the same Bible over and over again. What makes it so special is every time I read the Bible, I can read it as if I never read it before. Right? So when I approach prayer, I can pray a learned prayer as long as when I pray it, my heart and my mentality as is, is as if I had never prayed it before. This is how sincere I'm being. And, and these pagans, these Gentiles, were learning these pagan attitudes, these idol-worshiping attitudes that they would just babble and babble and babble as to convince their gods to change their mind and answer them. He's saying, that's not how you pray to our Father. That's not how you approach our God. Mark eleven twenty four 24 tells us this. Therefore, I tell you, Jesus is speaking, whatever you ask in prayer, <coughs> believe you received it, and it's yours. Right? <coughs> when you pray, believe that you received it, and it's yours. <coughs> so... I think this scripture is kind of problematic because in my mentality, if I'm praying for something that I'm believing, but how about the person that prays and they didn't get what they prayed for and they said, I knew it. In my mind, you're, like, you're an idiot, right? Like why'd you waste your time praying anyway if you knew it wasn't going to happen? What does this tell us here? That prayer must be accompanied by faith. Prayer must be accompanied by faith. Man. You're, you could do works all day long, but if it doesn't have faith, it's dead. It's dead. So, what's my answer to the problems that I think I'm seeing in the church world? I took some time and I wrote down five prayers that I pray. Five prayers that I pray. If you didn't get one of these when you came in, get one on your way out. Um, the, I'm in a class, medi medieval Christianity from the year 100 to the year 1500 and I'm looking at the growth of Christianity, Catholicism, Orthodox. Um, Islam, the Muslim religion, all these things, and where it came from and how it was, and looking at how they formulated their own prayers and what they did. And that's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to give a tool to say, here's a starting point. If you don't know what to pray, start here. This isn't the end. This isn't the finish line. This is the starting line, right? Take, take these things that I pray in my life and be like, I don't like that. I don't like cross this out. I gotta add something else here. But if you have something that you can stick to, like if you go to the gym and you don't have a workout plan, you're gonna walk over like uh, five pounds, 10 pounds. You're gonna do a little set there. You can do a little kickback here. You can do a squat. Yeah. Right, because you don't have a plan. You don't know, you know what you go to the gym for. I'm gonna go work out. And do what? I don't know, lift stuff. A lot of people do that. I'm going to go pray. What are you praying about? I don't know, stuff. I'm going to go pray stuff. Pray, pray what? Like start, start here, okay? So I kind of broke this down. First thing in the morning, I wake up. This is what I do, okay? I get up in the morning, my shower time. I hop in the shower. And I'm going to go to the Father in Jesus' name. So if you look at the Lord's Prayer, he said, pray after this manner, our Father who art in heaven. So who do you pray to? Yeah, see, you, some people even get that wrong, right? Like, like, really, we're not really supposed to pray to Jesus. When, when our normal daily prayers are really supposed to be to the Father. He, he's our God. He's our Father, right? But the way we get to the Father is through Jesus. He's the door. No man gets to the Father but by me, he said, right? So, Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. And you'll hear most of my staff, if not all our staff, pray that same way. Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I thank you for today. You made this day. 
I'll rejoice and be glad in it. Now, that's a scripture, right? So I'm quoting the word. But that's why I show you, why do I have to quote that? Why do I have to tell myself I will rejoice and be glad in it? Because I'm a negative person. Okay? I'm just, I'm, I'm generally a negative person. <clears throat> so my morning prayer, I've got to get my mindset right. I've got to get my heart right. I've got to be speaking things out of faith, even though my mind and my body don't want to say this stuff. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I commit myself to follow in your ways today. Help my mind stay focused and alert. You got ADD, pray that over yourself. Help my mind to stay focused and alert. Give me creative and innovative ideas. Come on, somebody. Guard my eyes that they will not gaze upon things that would draw me away from you. You got some eye problems? Pray that. Protect my ears from hearing things that would cause division among others and cause anger in me. I got some anger issues. I got to deal with that, right? I got to pray that out. Help me to keep my words in line with yours. He who, scripture, he who keeps his mouth keeps his life and keeps himself from destruction. Your boy get himself in trouble with his mouth, right? Let the words that come out of my mouth bring life to those who hear them. I pray that everything I set my hands to, you guys know this one, will prosper and be successful. Help me to know which things I need to do and avoid. What things do I need to say yes to, what do I need to say no to. My feet are blessed and everywhere I go is blessed because the greater one lives in me. Holy Spirit, use me today. Let my light shine for others to see. I praise you and I thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Right? That, that's just a quick morning prayer, right? And I know sometimes we make this stuff so long and so hard and I'm going to pray for an hour. Don't, don't set out to pray for an hour. Like, set out to pray for like a minute. And then add a minute. And then add 30 seconds. And then add another minute, right? You, you set out to pray an hour, it's like your gym membership. You're going to stop using it very quickly. Okay? Prayer two, praying over a meal. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I thank you for this food. I ask you to bless it. Use it as nourishment to our bodies. Bless the hands that prepared it. We receive it with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Some people add, I rebuke sickness and disease and take the infirmities away from, whatever. Whatever you want to add in there, whatever you want to pray. But, but a meal prayer. There's something powerful when you're sitting around a meal and, and you sit there and pray as a family over your food. Make it part of what you do. Pray for your children before school. Parents, I can't beg you enough. Just par parents, just connect for a minute. Parents who still have kids in school, just connect for one minute. I pray that you find the strength to wake up in the morning to bless your kids before they go to school. I'm lifting you up. I'm not putting you down. I pray that the Holy Spirit can empower you to make the decision to wake up in the morning before your kids go to school and pray a blessing over your kids. That you do not send them into the world. Man, the school system's evil. Do not send them into evil without blessing your kids and praying over them. Here's what I pray, and I'll just say what I pray for my son. Father, I thank you that Liam is blessed today. He is protected and safe. I thank you that he is a good friend and that others are friendly to him. Bring to his remembrance everything that he has studied. I was really bad in school. With, I get test anxiety. He gets a little anxiety, so I pray that over him. For he has the mind of Christ. He is the head and not the tail above only and never beneath everything he sets his hands to will prosper and be successful in Jesus' name. Amen. A quick blessing over him. You can go into more protection. Pray a hedge of protection, whatever you were raised believing. Right? Midday prayer. Let's say I'm in the office and I'm in, I'm just like, I got a mental block or I'm feeling bad about something. I, need to, I just need to get up and take a walk. I like to do laps around the whole outside of the building. I'll pray this. I'll walk outside and I'll say, Father, I recognize your presence is with me. Dude, right there, if that doesn't ground you and center you, I recognize your presence is with me. I need your assistance more than ever before in my life. Guide me, lead me, speak to me. Thank you for your love, for always hearing me. I praise you today, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, add, adding something like that into the midday of your life or, or any moment, just, God, I need you, I'm here. And the last thing is bedtime prayers. Um, parents again, raising your kids. 
there's something really special about bedtime. When you go tuck them in, and you shut the light off, there's conversations that happen that don't happen any other time, right? It's dark, the kid can talk to you, they don't have to look at you in the face. Make it intentional with your kids. Don't just send them to bed because you still want to watch Netflix. Like you had that kid for a purpose. You had that kid for a reason. Let's be a little intentional about how we're raising them and how we're putting them to bed and how we're blessing them. If your kid's got problems with sleeping and, and bad dreams, man, go pray for them. Uh, my mind was always creative, and what happens with a creative mind is that you dream a lot. And sometimes my dreams weren't always great, so I had to pray these kind of prayers as I was a kid. This was, this is, I learned this when I was a kid, okay? This is the prayer we prayed. Father, as I lay down to sleep, I pray that my sleep is sweet and I'll not be afraid. For you have given your angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. I'll lay down in peace and sleep in Jesus' name. Amen. And make your kid pray that. Don't just pray that over them. Make them say it. Make them learn it. Make them say those things over and over again. Again, why? A starting point for prayer. A starting point for a conversation with God. And I, and I hope, my heartbeat is, is that this would help you. This would ignite and kickstart a little bit more prayer than what we have now. Maybe we can get to 25% of Christians if we kind of create some systems in place in our lives that we can institute and implement prayer in our daily lives. Father, we thank you today that your word will never return void. It will accomplish exactly what you said it for. Lord, I pray today that your people are inspired by your word, that they are inspired to pray. They are led by the Holy Spirit to step into that. Lord, your word says pray at all times in all manners of prayer. Help us to do that. Help us to know what we need to pray. Give us the words to speak when we don't know what to speak. But I pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit to rest upon those who are looking for that next level of prayer by praying in other tongues in the Holy Spirit. Lord, as we leave you today, I thank you that we are protected and safe. Watch over your word to perform it. I bless everyone. They're blessed coming in. They're blessed going out. Everything they set their hands to will prosper and be successful in Jesus' name. Amen. Love ya. Thanks for watching today's message. My name is Pastor Josh, and if this message has impacted you in any way, I'd like to ask you to do a few things. First, I would love if you would subscribe to our channel and join us right here every Sunday at 9.30 and 11.30 a.m. Second thing is, I'm gonna ask that you would take a next step on your journey, and we'd love to help you do that. You can head over to FamilyChurchNY.com or email us at team at FamilyChurchNY.com to get started today. Have a great rest of your day.